Today we're going to learn about rectangles. Rectangles, although we know quite a bit about, there is actually quite a bit more that we don't know about. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's start with about what we know. A rectangle is simply a quadrilateral with four right angles. That's it. What most of you would say right away is that you also know that the opposite sides are congruent. The reason that isn't a basic or one of the fundamental properties of a quadrilateral or of a rectangle is that that's not exactly always a perfect way of describing it because I could actually say that all four sides are equal which makes it a square but that is also a rectangle. So for that reason we just say for a rectangle it's four right angles. Then we know that we have some opposite sides being congruent but we don't have to put that actually into our definition. Here's a big one. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent, meaning AC, the long segment that connects this vertex to this vertex, is congruent to BD, which is in this direction. So those diagonals are congruent to each other. And we also know from the fact that it's a parallelogram that not only are AC and BD congruent, the shorter segment, let's put an E in the middle here. So AE, BE, CE, and DE are all also congruent. So not only are the diagonals congruent to each other, let's call them the half diagonals or from a vertex to the center of the rectangle are also all congruent to each other and this part we knew from the properties of a parallelogram that we learned a couple days ago okay on to a question it says find x if we know ac is 6x plus 4 and we know bd is 7x minus 4 so the first thing to do would be to draw those objects onto the picture so we know what we're actually talking about. So we're talking about AC, which is this piece right here, and BD, which is this piece right here. Well, hopefully you noticed pretty quickly there that I drew in the two diagonals. And what we knew or learned from the previous slide is that the diagonals are congruent. So all we need to do is put the diagonals simply congruent to each other. doing some fairly simple algebra, we see that x equals 8. Now, the most important thing always in these types of problems is to go back and make sure you answered the question that they asked. This question says find x. So we're done. x is 8. But sometimes they might say, how long is ac? So in that case, we would need to put 8 back into the original equation and to get, in order to get our final answer of 52. 6 times 8 is 48, plus 4 makes 52. So it all depends on which question they're actually asking you. Here's our next question. It says, find the value of y. Well, we have an angle here. 4y plus 4, that's this angle right down there. Then we have another angle up here, y squared minus 1, would be that angle right there. Now those angles we do not know to be congruent to each other, so we can't do that. We have no theorem or postulate that says those two angles are congruent to each other. I have a little hint for you here, and that is, we might have to use the quadratic formula. We learned the quadratic formula way back in algebra uh, at the end of your ninth grade or tenth grade year. So now we need to figure out how to use it. What we actually know is that these two angles should equal 90 degrees. A triangle has 180 degrees and if we look at this picture we do have a triangle I just outlined it in yellow. But one of our angles we already know, and that's the angle right there. So we already took up 90 degrees. 
That means we're left with 90 degrees for the other two corners. So I can do y squared minus 1 plus 4y plus 4 equals 90. Rearranging all of this, getting it back into what we would call standard form, we would get y squared plus minus 87 equals 0. Now we're in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the form we have to get into in order to use the quadratic formula. Now if this could factor, you could factor it as well, if that would be easier. But I don't know that this one's going to factor that well, and I don't see any factors, so I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula says negative b. b is 4. So I have negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c. Now our a value is 1. So times a times c. All over 2 times a. Seems like a bit of work, but it's actually fairly simple. Now we just need to simplify this. So we have negative 4 plus and minus 4 squared, which would be 16, and then we have negative 4 times 1 times negative 87, which is 348. Again, we just need to keep on simplifying this. So we have negative 4 plus and minus 16 plus 348. Now it's time to use our calculator. We have negative 4 plus the square root of 364 over 4. And we have negative 4 minus the square root of 364 over, whoops, I think I changed that 2 to a 4. I better change that back. I apologize. Hopefully you caught that. should have a 2 down here. There we go. Now just get out your calculator and do your calculations on that. See what you get. By my calculations, my first answer was 7.54, rounded to two decimal places, and my second answer was negative 11.54. Now if we go back to our original equa equation, we have 4 times y plus 4. Well, that eliminates this choice because I'm going to get a negative angle there. So I have my final answer of 7.54 for the value of y. That's what it asks for is to find the value of y. And you're done. Here's another question. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then it is a rectangle. So we have a couple of statements there. We have our original statement that we knew if it is a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. Now we're saying if the diagonals are congruent, does it have to be a rectangle? That is actually true. When the diagonals are congruent, it has to be a parallelogram and it has to be a rectangle. So if it's a rectangle, we know the diagonals are congruent. If the diagonals are congruent, we know it has to be a rectangle. These two things are always true. Lastly, the question is, is it a rectangle? Well, if you remember what we just talked about, and that says diagonals are congruent in a rectangle. So let's just draw a quick little picture of what this, would, this rectangle actually would look like. Here's my picture. If I draw in my rectangle, again, doesn't have to be a perfect picture, just needs to represent the information we have. In order to know if it is a rectangle, I need to know 
is that diagonal in blue equal to that diagonal in blue? When that's true, I have a rectangle. It's the easiest way to test for a rectangle. We have to do the distance formula. So I will do the diagonal that I have the blue arrow pointed at first. So I do x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. I get negative 7 squared plus 1 squared, which would give me the square root of 50. Now I have to do the other diagonal. I'll point at this one with the green arrow. Again, I do the same exact thing for the distance formula. 4 minus negative 1 squared plus 3 minus negative 2 squared. So I have 5 squared plus 5 squared, which would give me 50. So since the diagonals are congruent in length, or congruent to each other, we know that this indeed is a rectangle. There are other ways you could test for it, but this is most likely the easiest way that you can test for a rectangle. Just simply see if the diagonals are congruent in distance. If you have any questions, make sure to bring them back to class.